dear student welcome the, to this module of dietary management in dual diseases namely diabetes and hypertension hypertension in diabetic patients is a common comorbidity there is an increasing prevalence of diabetics suffering from hypertension and this makes it a challenging task for the medical team to treat both the conditions hypertension is a silent killer as it can be asymptomatic for long years and become fatal suddenly hence it is extremely important for a diabetic to treat and manage the condition through diet therapy by following dietary restrictions throughout life from this lesson you should be able to understand the predisposing factors of hypertension in diabetes mellitus clinical outcomes of diabetes with hypertension and dietary approaches to maintain the dual disease before we move on to the lesson let us refresh and know what is hypertension hypertension is generally defined as a systolic blood pressure of 140 mm hg or higher or a diastolic blood pressure of 90 mm hg or higher or both hypertension is either essential hypertension when the etiology is unknown and secondary hypertension when the blood pressure arises due to other disease conditions usually endocrine as in diabetes studies indicate that at least 50% of diabetics end up with hypertension how common is high blood pressure in people with diabetes in developed countries about 50% people over the age of 65 and 1/4 of all middle aged adults have high blood pressure in developing nations the statistical reports are scanty around 3 in 10 people with type 1 diabetes and around 8 in 10 people with type 2 diabetes get affected by hypertension so people with diabetes are at risk of developing hypertension if they have the following factors like family history of high blood pressure lifestyle factors such as overweight consuming more salt poor consumption of fruits and vegetables sedentary lifestyle and being alcoholics now let us see the etiology of hypertension in diabetes mellitus genetics genetic variants in the gene encoding of angiotensinogen adenomedullin apolipoproteins and alpha adducin have been reported to be high risk factors apart from gene expression environmental factors like gestational diabetes fetal malnutrition and high birth weight are also predisposing to hypertension with diabetes next risk factor is obesity obesity is a most important risk factor for diabetes with hypertension oxidative stress induced obesity ends up in diabetes mellitus and hypertension increased energy intake is associated with elevated plasma insulin which is a potent natriuretic factor causing increased renal sodium reabsorption and consequent blood pressure elevation the third one is insulin resistance insulin is a pleiotropic hormone which plays a vital role in development of diabetes mellitus and hypertension insulin plays an essential role controlling blood glucose and inhibition of gluconeogenesis and glycogenolysis in insulin resistance condition it may affect the glycemic response of skeletal muscles liver adipose and cardiovascular tissues most patients with diabetes are insulin resistance and therefore insulin resistance influences both diabetes mellitus and hypertension stress is the next factor stress is an intrinsic and extrinsic stimuli factor which leads to physiological and psychological disturbances that threaten one's health effects of modern lifestyle causes chronic mental stress which leads to impaired renal sympathetic nerves activity and control of blood pressure is affected physical activity poor physical activity causes obesity simple physical activity triggers the fat burning metabolism and thus obesity induced hypertension 
will be kept under control. Excessive consumption of salt. Systolic blood pressure is significantly related to dietary sodium intake. Excreting an excess of 100 milli equivalents difference of sodium in the urine is associated with an increase of 3 to 6 mmHg in systolic blood pressure. Next is alcoholism. Alcohol intake raises blood pressure and is an important risk factor. Diabetics should abstain from alcohol and change their lifestyle pattern. Understanding the predisposing factors, now let us learn about the pathophysiology of hypertension in diabetic patients. Blood pressure is a function of cardiac output multiplied by the peripheral resistance which is the resistance in the blood vessels to the flow of blood. The diameter of the blood vessel markedly affects blood flow. When the diameter is decreased as in atherosclerosis, resistance and blood pressure increases. Conversely, when the diameter is increased as with vasodilator drug therapy, resistance decreases and blood pressure is lowered. Many systems maintain hemostatic control of blood pressure. The major regulators are the sympathetic nervous system for long-term control. In response to a fall in blood pressure, the sympathetic nervous system secretes norepinephrine, a vasoconstrictor, which acts on the small arteries and arterioles and increases peripheral resistance, thus raises the blood pressure by controlling the extracellular fluid volume and secreting renin which activates the renin angiotensin system. The activity of renin angiotensin aldosterone system is reduced in patients with hypertension and diabetes. Genetic factors and high sodium intake may alter the activity of the renin angiotensin system. Hyperinsulinemia due to insulin resistance and decreased clearance reduces the resorption of renal sodium and sympathetic nervous system over activity leads to hypertension. Insulin resistance is also associated with decreased vasodilatory response and increased vasoconstrictor response resulting in hypertension. Now seeing the pathophysiology, let us move on to clinical outcomes of diabetes with hypertension. Hypertension with diabetes mellitus is a strong risk factor for all clinical manifestations of atherosclerosis, heart failure and peripheral arterial disease. The complications of the heart are commonly seen and hypertension with diabetes leads to left ventricular hypertrophy, diastolic dysfunction, congestive heart failure, atherosclerosis and microvascular disease and cardiac arrhythmia. Aggressive control of hypertension may reverse the left ventricular hypertrophy and reduce the risk of cardiovascular diseases. Diastolic dysfunction is an early consequence of hypertension related heart disease. Now let us see what happens to the complications in the brain. Hypertension is the utmost risk factor for brain infarction and cerebral hemorrhage. Approximately 80% of strokes are due to infarction and the remainder is due to hemorrhage. The incidence of stroke increases with the increase in blood pressure. Increase in blood pressure is directly related to the insulin resistance. Hence, it is important to monitor the arterial blood pressure and keep it under control. Complications of the eye or retina leads to hypertensive retinopathy. It is a condition characterized by a spectrum of retinal vascular signs in people with elevated blood pressure. Retinal circulation undergoes a series of pathophysiological changes in response to elevated blood pressure and blood sugar. Series of changes happen on the retinal wall which results in thickening and hyperplasia, sclerosis occur. This is followed by retinal necrosis and retinal ischemia. Hyperglycemia comorbid with hypertension will speed up the retinal damage 
and may end up in vision loss. Now moving on to the complications of the kidneys. Hypertension in diabetic patients predisposes the end stage renal disease or ESRD. Hyperglycemia induced endothelial sclerosis alter the renin angiotensin reactions. This increases the renal pressure and also the systemic hypertension. High systemic blood pressure further damages the renal nephrons and renal failure occurs. Understanding the complications now, let us move on to the medical nutrition therapy needed for this condition namely diabetes and hypertension. Management of hypertension in diabetics starts with the lifestyle changes such as weight reduction, regular exercise and moderation of sodium. Let us first see how weight can be managed. Weight loss through exercise could be beneficial to manage the condition. If a person is obese then he has to reduce his weight based on the body mass index and the diet should be followed which is recommended by the medical team. Large weight reduction is possible when good dietary management is achieved. More than reduction of weight, the maintenance after reduction also is very essential to keep the parameters optimum. Physical activity, 30 to 50 percent of chances of getting hypertension and diabetes are more for those people who are obese than an ideal weight person. Physiologies of exercise clearly specify that there is more active muscle and cell induced metabolic balance along with better insulin clearance. When these happen regularly, the weight gaining option becomes ceased and better control on blood pressure and sugar level is achieved. Hence, patients with diabetes and hypertension are better advised for 30 to 40 minutes of regular exercise every day. The exercise can be simple walking and other aerobic exercises where the person does not strain too much because of hypertension and any exercise which is followed new has to be under the supervision of a medical doctor or any other medical therapist. All the other treatment strategies like weight reduction, diet control and medical prescriptions are required in a less level when regular physical activity is adopted. So regular physical activity should be the prime treatment in a diabetic person. Now let us move on to alcohol consumption. The social habits like excessive alcohol consumption is responsible for increase in blood pressure. Alcohol provides only empty calories. It not only increases the energy of the person leading to obesity but it also raises blood pressure and a pressure of 3 mm of Hg rise in systolic hypertension is seen when a person has 3 drinks per day. Hence to prevent the raise in blood pressure alcohol consumption has to be restricted or reduced and in cases not more than two drinks per week should be taken. Now moving on to the dietary modifications. American Diabetic Association recommends a strict control over sodium and increased consumption of fruits and vegetables which can be a great remedy for effective management of diabetes with hypertension. The important dietary principles need to be focused are energy, dietary fat, protein and sodium. Let us move on to see the proximate principles. The first the energy intake. The energy intake is recommended based on the nutritional screening results of the patient and should be tailor made whether the patient is obese or overweight, a calorie reduction is advised and if the person is normal 
an ideal weight management is advised and accordingly the calorie intake has to be modified. Carbohydrate rich foods like refined sugars and their products such as soft drinks, ice creams, sweets and honey must be avoided except during severe illness or episodes of hypoglycemia. These foods contain simple sugar which is easily absorbed causing rapid rise in blood sugar and hence carbohydrates in the form of polysaccharides such as millets, brown unpolished rice and other whole grains are recommended. One should remember when carbohydrates are taken with fiber they help maintain the blood sugar level and also because they contain high fiber they are also good anti hypertensive agents. When a person takes millets care should be taken that almost all millets contain the same amount of calories and only the fiber content differs. So when millets are taken the quantity of millets which is taken every day by a diabetic should be taken into consideration. So because millets contain fiber one should be careful when high quantity of millets is consumed. Next we move on to protein. Protein intake for persons with diabetes the requirement may be greater than the recommended dietary allowance but the total energy intake from protein should not exceed 20 percent. Protein recommendation is very much similar to the requirement for a diabetic patient and care should be taken to avoid animal foods because animal foods contain sodium which is deleterious to blood pressure. Animal foods not only contain sodium they also are rich sources of fat and hence when animal foods are taken the diabetic should be cautious to include lean foods and white meat rather than going for red meat and other fat organ meats. Recent studies reveal that there is a significant reduction in blood pressure by the consumption of soya proteins. The next nutrient is fat. Although dietary lipid does not affect blood pressure directly, it increases the risk of diabetic complications especially cardiovascular diseases. Hence a low cholesterol diet is recommended. Among the cooking oils and their fatty acids, olive oil and gingerly oils are effective in controlling hypertension. Olive oil is a very good antihypertensive agent because it contains a high amount of polyphenols. Omega 3 fatty acids in fish are highly beneficial and they help to maintain the good cholesterol. Polyunsaturated fatty acids are precursors of prostaglandins and therefore they clear the sodium in the renal filtration and hence will optimize the blood pressure. The next important nutrient is sodium. Dietary sodium restriction is highly important to control blood pressure. If the diet contains more sodium the volume of blood raises. When blood volume increases in the body the brain secretes glycosides and instructs the adrenal gland to increase the blood pressure. The glycosides generally stimulate the arterial wall and exert a pressure. Hence the role of salt restriction in hypertension management is important. Foods rich in sodium as you see in this table are to be avoided. In general all processed foods contain sodium and hence a diabetic has to be cautious while consuming these. Breakfast cereals, bread, cheese, other processed foods like dal powders, papeds, buttermilk, chickpeas all these contain high amounts of sodium. Salted butter and salt added pickles are high 
sodium rich foods and hence they have to be avoided. Now moving on to the intake of fiber. A minimum intake of 30 to 40 grams of fiber daily is recommended. Fiber helps slow digestion, regulates glucose and insulin production and provides satiety. Foods high in fiber include whole grains, legumes, vegetables and fruits. Fruits and vegetables are good sources of minerals, flavonoids, saponins, polyphenols and carotenoids. They are especially valuable for their ability to prevent vitamin C and vitamin A deficiencies which is more common in diabetic patients. Diets that are high in fiber help in the management of diabetes. Fruits and vegetables are high in cellulose which is a type of insoluble fiber and therefore are good. Soluble fiber delays glucose absorption from the small intestine and thus may help prevent the spike in blood glucose levels that follow a meal or a snack. Several nutrition intervention studies have been conducted to demonstrate the efficacy of dietary changes and one such popular intervention is the dietary approaches to stop hypertension. What is a DASH diet? This is a disease specific dietary recommendation found to be more effective in lowering hypertension. It decreases the systolic blood pressure and the total diet is significant than simply adding fruits and vegetables. It was invented by Apple et al and after conducting several trials it has been announced as physiologically safe for treatment. It is used both for preventing and treating hypertension. DASH diet is framed with more fruits and vegetables, non-fat dairy and nuts. Along with the DASH diet, lifestyle modifications such as exercise, a diet low in sodium, saturated fat, cholesterol and high in potassium, calcium, fiber and fruits have been shown to decrease hypertension. The major sources of energy should be from whole grain cereals and legumes, vegetables and fruits intake should be restricted as per the dietary management for diabetes and the others can be taken liberally. The DASH tips are eat more fruits, vegetables and low fat dairy foods, cut back on foods that are high in saturated fat, cholesterol and trans fats, eat more of whole grain foods, fish and poultry, limit sodium, sweets, sugary drinks and red meats. Allow low fat or skimmed dairy products, add more fresh foods than processed ones, add more vegetables and dry beans. Instead of snacking on chips or sweets, eat unsalted nuts, raisins, low fat and free fat free yogurt, unsalted plain popcorn with no butter and raw vegetables. Read food labels to choose products that are low in sodium. The general guidelines for managing diabetic hypertension. Blood pressure must always be kept under control. Patients with hypertension should be given a lifestyle or behavioral therapy. Attention should be paid to lifestyle changes so that weight reduction and regular exercise become part of everyday management of diabetes. Hyperglycemia, dyslipidemia, protein urea should be controlled for all the patients. For beverages, instead of sugars, non-nutritive sweeteners like NutraSweet, Aspartame are suitable sugar substitutes. Saturated fats such as animal fat like butter, lard, egg yolk and other foods and cholesterol have to be reduced to a minimum and these can be replaced by vegetable oils. Salt must be restricted to the recommended level to control the blood pressure. Good quality protein rich foods are recommended like lean meat, fish and chicken. Cigarette smoking and alcohol should be abstained. Caffeinated beverages such as tea, coffee or drinks that contain very low or no calories have to be restricted or taken in moderation. Small meals have to be spaced over the day rather than taking one or two big meals. These are helpful in avoiding postprandial peaks in blood sugar. 
Now what is the benefit of controlling hypertension in diabetics? Early treatment of blood pressure and control will lead to significant reduction in microvascular complaints and also macrovascular complications. Long term control of blood pressure in hypertensive patients with type 2 diabetes mellitus results in significant reduction in diabetes induced chronic complications. Close control of blood sugar helps to control microvascular complications and good control of blood pressure can control both micro and macrovascular complications. With these benefits, let me conclude by saying that weight management, low fat diet with fibrous fruits and vegetables, good physical activity, lifestyle changes can help to control or prevent hypertension in diabetics. Thank you.